I'm Gerard Saylor with the LD Fargo Public Library in beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and outside of Mystery One Bookstore in Milwaukee, talking to Barry Eisler, recent author of uh, Inside Out. Uh, tell us about the book, please. Inside Out started with the story of the, the true story of these missing CIA interrogation videos, first reported in the New York Times in 2007. Uh, Fifteen months at the time, the CIA said there were only two, maybe three tapes, but they had destroyed them. Fifteen months later, March 2009, they said actually there were 92 tapes, but don't worry, we've destroyed them. Tapes depicting waterboarding and other forms of torture uh, used against war on terror prisoners. The disparity in the number interested me. The whole thing interested me. And I started thinking, why did they make these tapes to begin with? Why did they destroy them? Why did they report a low number? Why did they up the number 15 months later? What's really going on here? And, uh, and that, those questions became the backbone for the plot. In my book, these tapes weren't destroyed. They're missing. They've been stolen by a former black ops guy named Daniel Larison, a real badass. He's blackmailing the US government with these tapes. Enter Ben Trevin, my uh, protagonist from the previous book, The Fault Line, another black ops guy. Ben is tasked with uh, finding Larison and retrieving the tapes uh, any way he has to. has to. Ben has to hook up with an FBI agent named Paula Lanier. Of course, she's beautiful, sexy, smart, and sassy. Uh, very different from Ben. Ben is an assassin. She's law enforcement. They've got uh, a lot of antagonism, but also wicked sexual chemistry. And uh, their hunt for the tapes again forms the backbone of the book. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Also the most political book and most topical book that I've ever written. Yeah, I've been reading what you do online since, I don't know, the past couple of years, and you've been talking about torture for a while. Yeah. And it seemed like when you first started talking about it, it was more of a legal standpoint. That yeah. from an attorney standpoint, which you were, that it's illegal and you're making fun of it, but it seems like you've gotten progressively more, I would say, political about it. Well. To me, uh, torture fails every possible test you can come up with. It's illegal, it's immoral, and it's counterproductive in that its, uh, its primary functions are to extract false confessions, this is why it was used by the Spanish Inquisition, uh, which wastes the time of our security, intelligence, and military people who wind up having to chase down false leads. The other thing that torture is great at, this is just me, this is documented, uh, read a book called Breaking, How to Break a Terrorist by Matthew Alexander, former Air Force interrogator who... Available at the library. Yeah, and available in bookstores <laughs> everywhere. It's a terrific book. Um, torture is just great at producing new jihadists and jihadist sympathizers. So in this sense, it's counterproductive. It fails every possible test. But you're right. Uh, as an American, my first reaction when I learned that we were torturing people is, how can this be? I know torture is illegal. And because I believe America is a nation under the rule of law, at least that's what I've always been taught, and that as Thomas Paine said, insofar as we have a king in America, the law is our king. Because I believe that, I thought, if there are people who have ordered and carried out torture, then they have to be prosecuted, just like we prosecute bank robbers, rap uh, rapists, and murderers. It's not complicated. Uh, but that never happened. And uh, I realize that people in America today don't care that much whether something's illegal. If you have any kind of a patriotism defense, people will probably ignore it. So these days, I, I mention, of course, it's relevant, it's important, it's extremely important that torture is illegal and, and that it's immoral. But it seems like what persuades people more that torture is wrong is when they learn of just how counterproductive it is. It doesn't even get you the safety it's supposed to get you. What it gets you is worse danger. And people seem to respond to that argument. And so I tend to focus my arguments uh, in areas that I think will have an effect. OK. I, there's lots of questions I can ask. Please. But I'm trying to make it short. So the last one, uh, romance writing. Yes. It, you always have an element of romance in there. Yeah. And there, you you sex had and, some sex and violence. Yeah, you, well, you had some violence. comment in there about I'm a romance writer. You go to romance conferences, I do. but they're not straight romance. I mean, yeah, it's sex and violence. Yeah. Well, the thing about the romance community uh, that was such a pleasant surprise to me is, let me back up. Yeah. First, there's always uh, there's a lot of sex in, and a lot of sex in my books, and uh, especially uh, as judged by against other mysteries and thrillers. Um, and a lot of women read my books and then like them, and I, get, I was getting, I still get, a lot of mail from women along these lines. They'll say, wow, I don't usually read this kind of book, but my husband was reading it and raving about it, so I gave it a try, and wow, I loved it too. So then I started thinking, women like these books, but they're packaged more for men. How can I reach more women readers directly? So I started going to romance conventions. And what I was thinking is, well, um, there's a lot of romance in my books, so these readers will like them. And I wasn't wrong about that. But what I was missing is, romance readers 
romance is the core of their interest, but these people are voracious readers. I mean, people who read romance, by and large, they read more than almost anyone, maybe even yeah. any other category, and they read lots of other categories. So it wasn't, it's not as though I go to these romance conventions and have to pitch my book as a romance. I started doing that, trying to emphasize the romance elements in the books. Then I realized I don't really have to. These people just love good stories. If you've written a good story, they want to hear about it. Also, the romance conventions, uh, with all respect to the mystery and thriller conventions that I go to because they're fun too, the yeah. romance conventions are the best. They're just so much fun, wildly enthusiastic readers. Uh, the reader to writer ratio at romance conventions like Romantic Times is just unmatched. So I really love the romance conventions. They're lots of fun. Good people. Well, that's a good sell. But Stop by Romantic <laughs> Times. It's in Los <laughs> Angeles, 2011. And la last question to tie it in is uh, marketing. Because I, I get interested in kind of the, the business side of yeah. it. I, I get curious about it, but you've been really good at marketing is what it seems like. You, you do all the online stuff. And, at blog and the Twitter and, and all these things. So I, I assume you, you, you really sketch out a marketing plan? For this book I did because uh, Inside Out is, is the most topical book I've written. Well, I'm holding it's this guy up. Come on. It's, uh, it's about Blackwater, Guantanamo, there's missing torture tapes, uh, the CIA, renditions, ghost detainees. All the things that are bad for America uh, and good for thriller writers saw in this book. So there was a lot more marketing I could do for Inside Out than I've been able to do for previous books. Uh, usually when you write a novel, there's not that much you can do to market it because... Uh, here we go. So we're talking about marketing. Yeah, yeah, hand out your there card. You Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, this was not staged. Anyway, because the book's so topical, there's a lot, there's a lot more uh, media that's possible for the book, and therefore a lot more that I've been chasing down. Usually if you've written a novel, even if it's a great novel, what do you do with it from a marketing hooks perspective? Hey, I've written a great novel, put me on your show. It's yeah. not, that's not necessarily a great sell. But with this book, because it's so topical and so timely, uh, there's been a lot of media that I was able to chase down and, and make happen. Okay, well thanks, Barry. Thank you, Jerry. I can't see the handshake there. Uh, George Saylor, L.D. Fargo Public Library at Mystery One Great. Bookstore in Milwaukee. Thanks. Great.